No, we're going to go ahead and kick off our nationwide series media availability with Austin Dillon, driver of the number three Advocare Chevrolet. Austin currently leads the NASCAR nationwide series points by eight points over Sam Hornes Jr. And Austin, we'll just kick off um, coming here at Charlotte. This officially ends a 21 race um, stretch for the nationwide series. So talk a little bit about kicking that stretch off here um, last earlier this year in May. Um, I believe you were seventh in points when we left that race and now you come back here at the end of that stretch and you were officially the points leader. Thanks. You know, uh, going into the summer stretch, you know, we felt pretty confident and that's where we could gain points. Um, the last couple of years in the truck series and the nationwide series both, it was, it's the time of the year that we were able to do that and staying consistent has definitely been the key factor in that. Um, you know, we've had some up and downs over that 20 week schedule. Uh, the guys have stayed strong and bought great equipment to the track and, um, you know, I'm very proud of them for, for the effort that they've put into it and we're sitting here with uh, four races to go in a great position and just uh, I'm happy with uh, the progress that we've made from the beginning of the year um, over that 21 week stretch. Right, we'll go ahead and open for questions for Austin. Let's go ahead and start here in the front and then we'll make our way to the back. Yeah, uh, Jared Turner, foxsports.com. Um, Austin, you've been in championship battles before, obviously. Uh, does this one feel any different? And just sort of compare it if you don't mind. Um, yeah, you know, I feel like this is definitely a very competitive one. I was in a very competitive one with Johnny Sauter and James Boucher and Ron Hornaday in the truck series. It came down to the last race, and this one will also. So uh, it is good to have that experience uh, and have won one. I think it's big to have already won a championship in, in NASCAR series. And, uh, you know, I'm not changing anything I've done. I've been racing the same way the, the entire time coming into this and I'm not going to change uh, my attitude now that we have the points lead. Go to Brian. Brian Nelson, Motor Racing Network, Austin. Um, so after 21 weeks straight, everybody's going to get a weekend off next week, except for you. Uh, in the 14 at Talladega, talk a little bit about what you're looking for next uh, next week there and, and getting together with that team. Well, I think it's, uh, it's really cool. I'm getting to get back in the 14, work with Steve Addington and those guys. And it's a great opportunity. You know, we're looking to the, the Cup Series next year as far as my career and um, getting able to get that experience is big for me. Uh, I think also, you know, you getting with a caliber, a group that can go win a pole, that could put you in the butt shootout, uh, you can go win the race. And then a lot of first time winners have had their win come at Talladega and I think that'd be great. All right, we'll go ahead with Kelly. Kelly Crandall from popularspeed.com. Austin, a lot can happen over the next four weeks, but with how consistent you run, I know you want to win, you can win, but if you go on to win the nationwide championship without a win, you'd be the first in history to do so. How, you know, I know you're going to enjoy that, but how would that be received maybe throughout the sport if a, a champion doesn't win a race? I don't know, I think it's pretty awesome uh, that we were that consistent over that amount of time with a lot of competitive race cars out there. You're racing against, uh, you know, the best in the Cup Series each and every weekend. Uh, two teams have been very dominant this year in uh, the Nationwide Series, the 54 and the 22. And um, we've done a great job of being the uh, the best consistent team out there in the Nationwide Series so far. So, um, you know, it's uh, we've been close, you know, multiple times this year of, of taking home a win. Michigan, with all the cup guys there, we led the most laps, had a flat left rear tire. Iowa, both races, I feel like we were the, the dominant car, led so many laps, and then you come down to last caution, something happens and doesn't go our way. Uh, it's uh, it's been tough. Uh, you know, we we feel like we should have had a few wins this year, and there's still four left, and we got some good tracks coming up. So, hopefully, we knock down a few. All right, let's come up front to David Caravello and then Jim Utter. David Caravello, NASCAR.com. Austin, you're you're coming up in an era when the nationwide cars don't have as much power as the Sprint Cup cars. You're coming up in an era where you can't test nearly as much as your predecessors. How difficult does this make the transition for guys like you and Kyle Larson who have an eye on making on jumping up to Sprint Cup next year? What do you what do you think? How much more difficult does that make it? it definitely makes it difficult. Uh, you know, Ricky Stenhouse has you know proven that it can be done. He's doing a good job. It's taken him a full year to to get uh, to where he's been pretty competitive the last couple of weeks and doing a good job at it. It's just an experience thing. And then also you know, having the right guys around you. I feel like uh, having a solid team is big. It has experience so you can use their notebook. And um, I think I'll have that with RCR. And um, 
you know, you just have to approach it uh, as a learning curve first year and then go out there and, and do what you can to, to win races, have shots at it. And every time you're in it, you got a great shot. It's 43%. You know, you got, you got a chance to win each and every week. All right, let's go to Jim Utter. Jim Utter, Shaw Observer, is it correct you're going to participate in the uh, test Monday here? No, I no. don't think so. I'm, uh, I'm actually headed to South Dakota, so, yeah, I'm, I'm oh, bird hunting. Okay. <laughs> I'm off. Well, forget that question. Then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other question, kind of back to the, what you were talking about earlier, are you more surprised that you haven't won a race yet this season or that you're leading the points without having uh, won a race? Oh, you know, I don't know if I'm surprised. You know, the competition level is so good in the Nationwide Series. It's, it was tough. You know, last year we had a great rookie season and won two races. Um, I feel like we were more competitive this year than last year at all the tracks, more consistent at more tracks. Uh, you know, it's just it's tough, man, out there right now. And, and to, we've had four or five races this year that if things go our way or we make a different decision at the last of the race, we, we have four wins. It's, it's that close, and um, we'll see. You know, we got four races left, and I still think we can win. We've had fast cars. If you look at our driver rating, our number of laps led, I've led more laps this year than I did last year, quite a few more. Um, it's just uh, leading the right lap is what matters. All right, any additional questions? Okay. We've got a mic right here, and then we'll end with Brian to George. Yeah, Austin George Diaz with the Orlando Sentinel. Getting to what Jim said about you know the racing and 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 the victories. Is it? How do you feel about the the fact that obviously the Cup uh, regulars have basically dominated the nationwide series and, and the dynamic of, of of that? Or is that something you're comfortable with? Would you like to see some changes made in the series to make it uh, more of a level playing field among the Nash nationwide regulars? No, uh, uh, there's only two guys that have been dominating from the Cup Series. I feel like we've been the, the third best team. If you look back at all the Cup guys that have been running all year long, you've had Casey Kane, Matt Kenseth, and a bunch of guys that haven't won races that are in the Cup Series each and every week. Matt obviously won last week, but he's won, he's run a bunch of races this year and won a bunch in the Cup Series. So um, it's, uh, it's it's very tough. And uh, having those the two guys that were obviously dominant from the Cup Series were Brad, um, Kyle and Kevin won a race earlier this year at Atlanta where he's really talented also. So it's um, it's a tough competition. I love having those guys in there because I think it gives more opportunities to the nationwide regulars when they do beat them. It shows that they can compete, and um, that uh, it definitely can put you to the next level when you're able to do that. All right, we'll end with Brian. Brian Nelson, MRN, again. Um, Kind of going off of what David was asking a few moments ago about uh, uh, the, the Cup Series and the transition there. Uh, Jimmy Johnson came in earlier and was talking about the difference in horsepower between the Nationwide and the Cup Series and how a lot of guys, uh, well, him in particular, the, the higher horsepower cars, you know, he came up through that and it really helped him do better in the, in the Cup Series than in the lower series. Have you noticed and had to adjust to the higher horsepower, and how do you think your style of driving suits that kind of power? You know, I, I grew up dirt racing, so it was 830 horsepower, you know, 2,300 pound car, and you're whipping around a dirt track. And so I have a lot more horsepower in my dirt car when I get in it from my nationwide car. Um, I feel like you have to be able to be adaptive and be able to change your driving style to whatever you get in, whatever kind of car it is. Uh, I, I do believe there's some guys that are better in high horsepower than others and, and better than a lower horsepower car than others. So um, it's something you have to be able to adapt to. Um, obviously, there's some really good ones that can adapt, and some that like it better with more horsepower, some don't. It's, um, it's kind of a driver preference, but I want to be able to race anything that I get in. So I just want to be able to adapt as much as I can. But there is definitely a driving style you have to change to when you lose horsepower or gain it.